time being so that I can get caught up because I'm literally a month behind on people posting stuff. So we're gonna do what we can here, okay? Let's try to blast through this as quick as we possibly can. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, oh, let's turn on the, take that down, we don't need that. Those of you who don't know, I do critiques uh, usually once a week or as quickly as I possibly can. And I might be changing some of the, um, the, uh, uh, the rules for this so that I can keep up with everybody. Okay, so we'll, uh, we'll figure that out in a little bit, but I at least want to get through everything that I've had so far before I uh, move into the new rule set, okay? So last time I'm pretty sure I did finish derp time, and then we're gonna go right in here to Anko Daifuku. All right, so this one from Anko is really cute. Um, I'm definitely liking kind of the scratchy idea behind all of this. Uh, kind of what we discussed a few times before in other critiques uh, is something that I want you to start paying attention to. Is It's totally okay to have the scratchy kind of like crayon looking idea, but if you really want to work on some stuff, start working on your basic shapes to get down here. Because like, Timo's hat is just kind of a bowl and there's no real shape to it. I know what it is, but other people might think it looks kind of weird. Um, just everything's a little bit too loose-handed on the base shape of things. So you really want to start working on some of that, making sure that you're really following along with, um, you know, basic shape of the face, of how Timo's face is supposed to be shaped, his hat, his goggles, making sure that everything fits into space properly. I'm um, thinking of stuff as a 3D order. That's a, just a higher bit of a step though. Like you can still keep a lot of what you have here. And like what I said, the scratchy quick little lines and stuff like that, you can keep that. You just gotta clean up your form right now. Um, Cause I, I like this. I like flat colors and stuff like that. And I think it looks really cute. I just think these flat colors need to be um, boxed into their proper shape so that we kind of know what's going on because now that I look at it, it looks like Timo's actually on his back and then that's actually his boots and stuff like that so it's just hard to depict some things um another thing to keep in mind which I'm actually going to go to with um Aurelia's next drawing is something that I remember I learned and then I forget to use it every once in a while but it really helps on picking your colors and the highlight and contrast between colors okay so watch this Aurelia I love your little penguin ideas and it's really cute, but what I'm having a hard time of is depicting what's going on because everything is all one color. And what I mean by that is based on its contrast. Here's how we're gonna do this. Okay guys, here's a cool little tip for you guys. If you're ever having an issue where you're like, man, I like my drawing, but something, it feels really flat. Why, why can't I get my stuff to like pop out how I want it to, okay? It's really cool. It's where you grayscale your picture. Okay, so we're gonna blow this up real quick. We're gonna grayscale it and you're gonna see what happens when we do. So image adjustment, black and white. Okay, see how all of this is just one gray blob and then you have a couple nice little areas with the black right here, black right here, like the eyes and stuff. Those areas pop out more because we have that contrast between the gray, the white and the black. You guys need to be careful when you're doing this kind of stuff and that's why uh, gray toning will really help is see how all the hair and everything just kind of blurs together with the with the the little fox guys going on here. I'm assuming this is off of a character. I'm just not sure who this character is. Uh, so I apologize for not knowing who you penguinified. Uh, this is something that Aurelia does, by the way, guys. Um, she, she, he, they, sorry. They um, you, like making penguins out of characters, which I think is really cute. Um, it's just something fun they like to do. But I mean, if you guys if you guys pay attention, like you'll really want some of these darker areas to start showing up a little bit more, so you can section off everything, right? Because if you have these darkers set next to the light, let me get a different brush. It's not so hard. If we start graying out some of these areas, are making it a little bit darker against the gray, and then making sure that these lights kind of pop up a little bit more. Right here, the shine kind of shows through, and then that snake face. But see how the snake's kind of blurring in the background too much because of the gray? Like, you guys need to kind of think about that. And then if you gray stuff out, you can kind of figure it out. And then if you start in grayscale as well, so let's say you did in grayscale and you figured out all your colors and you're like, okay, I like how this looks, I like how my darks and my lights look, and everything looks right there, right? Like, that's exactly how I want it to be. What you guys can do is you can actually color in grayscale, okay? It's another thing I'll show you really quick. So I know this is really bad, but I'm just trying to give like a general 
basics of an idea real quick here, okay? So... We'll depict out the rest of that later. But okay, let's say that's exactly what we want here, right? Uh, oh, sorry. Okay, so that's exactly what we want, right? What we can actually do is on our another layer, we can set it to overlay here, okay? We can set it to overlay, and then we can actually put our colors on top. So you, you will usually want to use the most saturated color. Check this out. When you overlay it, oh, hey, what's up? The color comes back in. Say what? And look, it keeps all your shades too. Crazy, right? So like now I can go in and I can color the beak. You know, the beak is supposed to be orange. You'll start off on a really saturated kind of color here, like I said. But yeah, see? Now, I know it's a mess that I made of that, and I'm sorry. But that's something that I want you guys to keep in mind, is if it, this is a different thing that you guys can actually work with if you want, okay? So, if, you, um, if you're if you trying to work in grayscale so that you can figure out how to depict your stuff, okay? You can work all in grayscale and then make an overlay to color on top of it and bring your color back in, right? But either way, um, going back, whoops, I didn't mean to bring up my box, sorry. <laughs> going back to you really quick here. So that's why a lot of this feels really flat, okay, hun? Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going on, but I like if there's certain areas that really pop out and that's because you have those contrasting colors where the eyes are black right here. Um, you've got that thick line. You just need to be able to, like, I'm really confused what's going on with the rest of it. There's so much going on in details, and they all blend in as one tone. So I can't depict, like, if, where the arm's at, uh, where the hair's supposed to begin and end, what the brown piece is supposed to be right here, another part of the hair. It's all really confusing. So I want you to start um, kind of like what I told uh, for Anko. Getting your structure down really good. Maybe try working in a grayscale or at least flopping your uh, picture back and forth to a grayscale so that you can um, figure out what your tones are going to be so you can push. Uh, usually darks go in the back and lighters will pop up front, okay? Matthias, yeah, man, it's been a while. I'm sorry, I'm doing critiques right now, but I I miss you. It has been a while. I will talk to you later, okay? Um, so, yeah, that's, that's what's going on here. I really want to see you, like, start cleaning this up a little bit more. Start depicting more. Because it's going to start really being, like, super cute. Like, really get the shape of that penguin down before you start putting all these extra things in here, okay? Like, really think about your composition a little bit more before you start putting all this stuff in. I know what you're trying to do. You've got a lot of detail. I just can't depict it right now. we got to be able to start um, getting that, okay? Nodaru. Oh, this is really pretty. I like your soft lines. Um, I like the very simplistic shades and stuff going on here. And here, guys, this is why this will pop out. I'll show you. Now that we've got Noruru's up here, we'll go ahead and grayscale it as well. Come on. Whoops. I'll close that off. Image. Adjustment. Black and white. Where'd it go? There it is. Okay. Now see how the skin tone and the hair is just slightly different, but it still pops just a little bit more? You'll totally, like, see how that that gives you the difference between, okay, here's the armor pieces here, which is slightly different, and you've got this white sectioning off from the skin to kind of give a little bit more of understanding of where the pieces of the armor are at. It's subtle, but it's enough to help depict these characters on top, uh, characteristics. On top of what we've got going is that um, the darker areas on the back of the hair, which helps pop with the lighter colors that come up top. That's how basic shading kind of works, and you can do that um, with tone. It's it, it's um, it's differences in tone to be able to depict these areas, right? Okay. So, um, honestly, I'm seeing the biggest thing here with your character is I think we want to work. I want you to work more on your faces right now. Because you've got, you've definitely got a general idea of how body shapes and stuff work. Like, it's not perfect, but I'm okay with it. You know what I mean? Like, we can work more on that later. The thing that I'm picked at, like, immediately go to, and it's something that's really hard to start getting down, is the face. And, um, I want you to start working on some of that. Now, your style is okay. You can definitely still keep these, um, you know, kind of cartoony-esque style. But it's all slightly out of proportion, which is bothering me slightly, okay? 
So we're gonna go back in here, okay? So currently, what we've got with your face, oops. Let's do darker. Okay. So here's your face. Now your jaw, first off, is really wide, which can be okay, because I assume, this is, this looks like Guild Wars 2, and I'm gonna assume she's either Humor or Norn, which Norn had the really strong faces, so if you really want that, we'll want to probably make her head just a little bit bigger, and same with her shoulders and stuff like that, which it does look like a Norn hairstyle. So, I mean, really think about your character and everything that's about, like, if Norn are big and bulky characters, then you're gonna want everything about them very bulky, very strong, very broad, right? So, well, you can still keep them looking like beautiful characters. You just still gotta keep that kind of um, strong-esque look. And I'm not, I'm not gonna focus on your body or anything right now. Oh, it's Aphrodite's from Smite? My bad! I guess it works the same way, too. She's, she's kind of along the, whoops, hey, I'm drawing right on top of that. My bad. Copy the skin. Sorry, I don't know every character that you guys throw at me, like... But anyways, let's go back to this face here. So, what I do for faces is, yeah, I start with the circle shape, and then I usually kind of sketch in the jaw really quick, right? So, we got the jawline. Now, remember, the back of your head actually goes, like, you have quite a bit of the back of your head before it goes down to the neck, which you definitely started to do here. You can see that right here on your character. Um, but the neck just kind of... Like, the neck doesn't, like, you know, stretch into that. It's all just a straight thing that kind of comes up into your head. Because your neck's, like, solid, right? It doesn't, like, move with you moving your head. That makes sense. I'm not sure how to really describe that there. <laughs> it's solid. It, it doesn't move. Okay. So, usually what I start to do is, like, if I'm really having issues with plotting in the face... I don't do this as much because I've gotten a little bit better of a gist of it, but I'm still kind of shaky on some of it. So I'll usually, A, I'll flip my stuff a lot so I can double check on both sides what I'm doing. And then science. the eyes here, I'll kind of just block stuff in really quickly to make sure that everything looks and feels okay. Now you've got the jaw, the, your cheekbones right here that come down. Like, really feel the bone structure in your face and feel about how everything is. So currently what I think is the biggest thing that I'm seeing here is uh, the really puffy cheek doesn't quite fit with the rest of the face. And it's mostly the jaw and the neck area right here that's bothering me. And same with the eyes. A little too big for the rest of the head and the nose and stuff like that. The nose, see how much closer my nose is to my lips? Like, you're just slightly out of proportion on everything and I want you to kind of work on that, okay? Um, now you can put that into your own style. This, unfortunately, me trying to do this right now, I'm gonna show you in my style, and you don't have to do it this way. You can still keep your cartoony way, right? You can still keep those eye types and stuff like that. It's just gonna look more in my style. So try not, try to take that as a grain of salt, okay? But look, we've got eyes, nose, mouth, which is about all in the same distance from one another. I mean, really, really think about that. Okay, it's actually to about my chin, so, but still. Really start trying to plot out where all your lines are, because it'll help you with the base structure of your face. And like, I, I've got to do a better one based on this. Um, I've, I've actually got to think more about where everything is as well. But I mean, this is something that you, all of you guys can start doing and why I'm saying, all of you that I've critiqued prior, this is what I'm talking about when I'm structuring out the face. Like, think, like, start plotting everything. Figure out where everything goes and start making shapes with everything. Because you'll be surprised how much you'll start recognizing, like, a 3D space in this area when you start connecting lines to everything. You know what I mean? Like, look at I suddenly have, like, kind of like a 3D mesh going on here, on here, on this face. So I kind of know where I want to put everything. And it's all just really basic block shapes, but at least I've got an idea so that when I start going into inking and doing another sketch on top of this, um, 
you know, I can start drawing out what I want a little bit more. So I've got, okay, I've got the basic structure down. I know what I kind of want here. So now I can do another sketch. You know, and start fleshing out this face that I've got going on. And I'll keep flipping it. Kind of keep doing what I'm doing. You know what I mean? Again, this is this is my kind of face type. And what I'll draw for faces usually. So, I mean, take that as a grain of salt, like I said. Don't don't think that you have to draw it exactly like this. But this, this is what will start helping you, guys. You know what I mean? So, it was quick. It's okay. It's not amazing. But I can keep, you know, fixing it from here, right? Think about everything as a shape in 3D so that you can keep building up and building up and building up because you don't need all the details right away you just need to plot stuff so that you can add the fine details that give it the rest of the um the shape and form right so like you can start ears off as just a block or a rectangle or a triangle or whatever fits for you guys but just break it down into very easy shapes okay it's, it's tough, it's hard to start off, but once you start doing it over and over again, and you have the blueprint set for yourself, it will work for you guys, and it'll make you feel so much better every time you start to draw. That way you can go like, okay, you know what, I really don't like this nose now, so I can just like keep fiddling with the nose until I get a shape that I really like out of it, after I get the details in and stuff like that. But at least you know exactly where you kind of need to plot it, and you can start fixing stuff from there too, okay? So that's, that's going to go for quite a lot of you at this point is this is what you guys need to start really thinking about when you're making these shapes. doesn't have to be perfect right away. Keep playing with stuff until you find something that you feel really comfortable with, okay? But see how, see how the nose, see how your nose comes in and your nose bridge comes down into the rest of your face and that it follows to your eyebrows? That's kind of the same thing that happens here, right? I mean, we, can, we can really start plotting out all these different shapes and stuff here. But this is like literally the basic shapes and stuff so you can start figuring out where everything starts to go so that this will help you with shading as well. But I mean, look, look at all these shapes that I've got here and look, this connects to the eye here. This goes along the lines here. I can kind of do this. Then the rest of this is kind of the shape here for the rest of the, the cheek area. Then you've got the jaw. Like everything's sectioned off and then you can start shading this based on you know where your light source is and stuff like that. It all starts tying together once you guys get these basic shapes down, okay? Keep working on this. Keep practicing this. Go, okay, I wanna draw eyes like this and here's how I want to draw them. Okay, and here's how I'm gonna place it on this blueprint of a face that I've got going on. Okay, here's where I want the hairline to be. So here's where the basic, you know, shapes of my hairs is gonna start. Stuff like that. And then you can start planning more from here. Like, see, see how everything starts to tie together? Granted, I've made her look super old because of all the lines. Right, uh, lines cause age, guys. So if you want a character to look older, then you start drawing more lines on the face. <laughs> But, I mean, you can start plotting everything, and then as you keep building up and keep making more, you can keep doing more for each of these characters, and then start um, getting more characteristics into them, too. Like, if I really wanted to make her smile, you'll figure out how to make the smiles of everything. It, it starts to work, okay? Um, and I'm sorry, I'm not paying attention too much to chat. I'm trying to, like, power through these as quick as I can. So, there's the general gist, okay? 
Hopefully that made sense. Again, I, guys, I know it's a lot to take in right away. It's a huge, huge step from where a lot of you are at. You guys are at that point, though, that you can start pushing yourself onto these next things, and they're homework for you. You have to just keep, as you keep drawing every single picture, you're going to start practicing these things one piece by one piece by one piece by one piece, and you just keep doing it with each thing. It's not going to be perfect right away. You're going to do a ton of drawings that you're not going to like until finally one day you go, oh, hey, I really like how I did this. And then you take that and you keep moving with it as you keep progressing, you keep getting better okay it all comes with time so take things one at a time so let me recap really quick for people the thing I want you to start working on here Noduro is working on your faces right start practicing your faces and what you really want out of your cartoony shapes okay um I want you to work on that okay I'm picking every one thing that I want for people to start working on okay so uh, Anko I want you to work on basic, like really basic shapes, cleaning your stuff up just a little bit so that these flat shapes um, start having a little bit more detail to them, okay? And then Aurelia, same thing for you. I want you to focus on basic shapes so that I can understand more of what's going on and not, don't worry so much about your color or if you're going to, make sure that that gray space, when you turn it into black and white, you can really depict everything so that it doesn't like mold into one solid figure, okay? Norduro, again, your face. Moving on. Matroda. Matroda is next here. Matroda, really nice job so far. Um, a lot of the same stuff that I've just explained is going to be towards you. And I think what I want to see more of and what I want you to keep practicing on is definitely these um, body shots. Because you've definitely got a good idea and a good grasp of what's going on with the body here. So, I'm going to copy and paste this real quick. Alright. So, you've got definitely a good idea of what's going on with basic body shapes, for sure. I just want to see it cleaned up a little bit more. I want you to keep practicing, um, refining your line work. Um, refining what it is you want to do with stuff before you start coloring a little bit more. Or if you really want to start refining your coloring, start doing that. Like, pick one of these things, okay? Either start refining your line work or start painting more if you want to do more of a painter style. Uh, figure out what it is that you want out of your style. Um, if you really like line art, then work on your line art. Because these lines are nice and everything, but it's a little bit too much detail going on. It's kind of taking away from some portions of the character. Like, I, we really don't need all of these bits of like little squiggles and stuff like that for the hair hair actually doesn't like you don't see every single strand of my hair you know what I mean so you can really flatten this out a little bit more while still giving it the idea that it is hair based off of tone tone again comes really heavy into the ideas here I'll just show you really quick like Here's what I do when I start to overpaint stuff, right? So I start to get the darker colors. I'm gonna take some from the background because I like using background colors to help shade. Okay. And yes, we're gonna follow some of the shape of what you've got, but I'm not gonna like highlight every single bit and piece that you've got going on here, okay? So like this is, this is what I would do for practicing my colors and stuff like that, is trying to get these tones out. I want to go a little bit darker as well. I want to get some really like crisp areas going on. I'm going to blend some more stuff so I kind of get this nice blue, gray, the cool gray, however you want to put it. So I'm just going to color the eyes here so that I can kind of get all the details in here. And I'm trying to do this quick. So. Usually what I'll start off with is a dark color and then I'll add the highlights in. So I'll kind of like, okay, I really like this color that I finally blended into, right? So here's what we're gonna use. Sorry, I'm trying to, trying to do this quickly and make it still like reasonably good. So you guys don't sit at me and stare at me and go, Rand, what the hell are you doing? This isn't good at all. Highlights always look really nice. Usually your highlights are going to show more of the actual hair detail and then the dark areas that contrast with the highlights. So see how now I've got a little bit of like this hairstyle going on? We know what hairstyle he's got. 
without all those line details. You know what I'm saying? So sorry again for erasing his face. And then the highlights will really start to show a little bit more of those streaks, but not a whole lot. Like you don't have to go super crazy or anything with it. But see, see how I've got all that and I didn't have to explain all that with the line art? Same thing goes if I was doing line art, so. We're just gonna get the general gist. We know what's going on. But we're not gonna go overboard with it. Like we don't need all those lines. Just more of like the, the area that we know what we want to color into. Maybe a little bit to show like where his actual, um, where the hair, like, you know, my, my part here. Where that shows, you can show a little bit like the top of his head where his um, hairline actually starts to come out. That's all you really got to do. You don't have to do... You don't have to go so crazy on it, okay? I really like, with my chibis, I really like focusing on line art and making it really clean and solid. Um, you can still do some of this like light crisp squiggle line stuff. I've seen people who did that before, but find out who you really like. If you want to do line art, find out whose line art you really like and try to imitate that. Or if you want to go for more painting and coloring of this stuff, it's a big thing. I actually just posted a whole thing about coloring on the critique corner area. Uh, or I'm sorry, not critique corner, but, uh, the art resources right here. If you guys go into art resources, there's a lot of really cool stuff, especially for learning how to start, uh, coloring. Coloring's a big, big step, okay? Like shades, all that stuff. It's a lot to think about. So take that at one step at a time as well, okay? So just find out what you want to start on and start practicing that a little bit more, okay? Because, yeah, like your, your basic body shapes, you, you know what's going on. You're definitely in shape here. You've got the top muscles here. It's basic. Yeah, you could have, like, you could always do a little bit more. But like the arms, if you were to take that down, like here's how long the arm is. So technically it comes to here-ish, about, which is correct. Because yes, your arms, when you when you stand up and you hold your arms, it comes to about mid-thigh. So that's good. You've definitely got that. Uh, guys don't really have much of a hip shape, so it's kind of a solid line here. You're good there. Like, I, I feel like your proportions are decently in line. Definitely so. So I think you can play with this more. Definitely keep playing with this more. You've got a you've got a good idea. Okay. Hopefully that helps a little bit. Gives you a little bit more idea. Um, I'd love to just see a little bit more cleaned up work. Spend a little bit more time on it because you've already got all this beautiful detail. What is it that you're gonna do next with it? Okay. Uh next up we've got very hungry panda. All right, at the speed of sound, run like the wind. Nice. I love the really glowy bits here. I like the darker um, colors that you have with this bright green stuff. The uh, color, um, like purples work really well with greens and so do like, then you've got like different con or tones of purple going on here. And then you got different greens as well. Plus then the bright yellow also is a really nice complimentary color with it. So I like your colors for sure. Um, and you've got an idea of what you're trying to do like see this darker area in between the braids and then the the highlight starts to really shine through that is definitely what light does especially because those wings are like glowing bright definitely what that does so good good job there you're definitely trying to get the idea of it keep practicing that though because it's not like you if it's going to be like this black area she's going to be a lot darker and those lights are going to like really start to tone out everything about her because her elbow gets a little bit lost here um, her thumbs and stuff like that get just slightly lost when actually this line right here would be like super crisp because of the light showing up from the behind, what, like the back of it. Um, so just, just little things like that. Something to think about. Um, I'm going to tell you as well to start working on, pick, pick something next in your proportions that you want to start working on. Either your face, your body, arms, something like that. Cause you, it looks like you drew the elbow right to about here, which is wrong. Um, the hands are really elongated a little bit. I like this hand here though. Like this arm right here is really good. Just this one that you're trying to, um, use for, uh, trying to make it pop out at the camera a little bit more. Cause I know what you're trying to do. You're trying to do this, right? Um, but I mean, look at me in the camera already. Like that, it's all a little messed up compared to what you've got right there. I'm probably backwards too. So sorry, but start working on your proportions. 
just like I was telling everybody else, start trying to plan stuff out. If you'd like to find um, some uh, tutorials or you need help with tutorials, send me a message and I'll try to find an ARM tutorial specifically. Uh, and uh, we can start going from there. But you've got a good idea. You're definitely trying to get motion going through here. It's just refining your basic shapes at this point. Your, your proportions of what you want to have happen. And yeah. I mean, you're on the right track. You're definitely on the right track. I don't want to keep like uh, saying the same thing over and over again um, that I said for everybody else. But I think I want to see you work, I think, probably on the face or at least on like the shoulder and arm area for sure. Okay. Start practicing those a little bit and keep like keep doing these uh, this coloring and try to figure out a little bit more of what you want to do with it. Okay. I like it. Otaku Burrito. Very nice. Um, I'm really liking the line art as well here. Very nice and clean. Um, quick brush strokes, which looks really nice. The coloring's a little odd though. Like I see that you're trying to definitely get like kind of the red nose and the lips and the chin. Um, areas that bone is really close. Ooh, Aaron just posted something really cool. Aaron, could you post that in the art resources, please? I would really appreciate that. That would be really good. Um, Pinterest boards have all sorts of character design resources to pull from. That's really cool. I'll have Aaron post that or I'll post it after the critique. Ugh. Oh my god, we're already 30 minutes in. I've only gotten to like four people. All right, let's try to speed this up a little bit. Um, your coloring as well is just bothering me slightly. Like I understand that any of the areas that you have that are like really close to bone or cartilage usually has a little bit more color toning to it, which is correct. It's just slightly wrong here. I want you to think about that. You're, sh you're not really, you're showing more of like color toning right now than you are actual shades. Although I know you're trying to go for some areas of it as shade. The color tone of your nose is going to be slightly different from the actual shade part, not the same color. Because now I'm really confused. Like we've got the cheek color here. Um, I'll see these random kind of highlights that are on parts of the ears and stuff like that, which don't really work. Um, the highlight here on the nose and the lip and the chin is I feel like it's right because it feels like the light's coming from here. But then the rest of these, it's like the light's suddenly like bouncing or reflecting off of this way. And so, a little odd. Um, also, like, your neck isn't going to show that highlight there either unless you've got, like, a different kind of highlight going on there. Or a different, uh, I guess, like, really harsh light that'd be, like, directly onto you there. So, it it's a little different. I... I'm trying to think of how to describe it, but once you start understanding shapes a little bit more, you'll start understanding where like these hard lights here. I'm <laughs> like, uh, let me try to get this, give you an idea. It's on the art resources board. Thank you, Aaron. Okay. So. You're basic, like, at this point, I'm going to try to show you really quickly how I would kind of map these out. So, okay, we've got the circular shape area at the bottom. However, I'm thinking that, like, right here is about where some of this highlight's definitely going to pop in a little bit more. So I'm going to know that this area is going to be lighter, while this area is definitely going to be darker. See how much shape that already gave us just a little bit more? You're blending stuff a little too softly, and I want to see more of the harder blends, these harsh lighting differences, because it's going to make things pop. It's going to give it a little bit more of a 3D area to it. You see, you had these highlight areas, but you didn't put any highlight onto like these back areas that would really help, you know, the soft lighting that would help give it a little bit more shape. This is what you start to learn when you start shading things um, in like a light drawing class. Um, they tell you about basic shading and then they'll tell you about reflective light. And this is what this back area reflective light is supposed to be. This this thing back here, right? It's a soft shading that comes in on the back side of usually anything that's very round or if you have like a soft lighting that's coming behind you. It makes things go from being a flat shading to a really uh, realistic kind of shading. So it's just little stuff like this that you need to start planning out just a little bit more so that you can kind of get the idea of where you're working with stuff. 
and that's that's the shapes I'm talking about. Like once you know the shapes of the face a little bit more, other than like, yeah, it's an anime face. However, like you still got the idea of where stuff is supposed to be. So his cheek area is actually like all of here, right? So we're gonna actually, I'm just gonna color right over some of this here. Cheek area. His lips are a little bit out of place, uh, but that's kind of anime-esque anyway. Like, they do that kind of stuff. So, I'm okay with it. But, like, his cheek... What? We have the cheek underside area a little bit. So, this is going to start being a little bit darker. Underside of his eye should be alright. You had that highlight kind of going under there, but I want to bring that a little bit closer. I think, doesn't Shishomaru have those really thick eyeliner-like eyes, too? Like, he is super, what do they call it, bishy? <laughs> I, I forgot. It's been so long since I've been, like, that close in, like, the anime uh, realms. So. So, okay. But see how that's already starting to give him a little bit more shape based off of where I think your light source is coming from? Like, your light's kind of coming in around this way, right? So we've got, we're following this in. This would probably be a little bit darker of a moon. Try not to color too much of it. But you know. Just stuff like this. And then your reflective light would be alright just a little bit right here. I think his chin a little off. I want to give him a little bit stronger of a chin. And then this right here, if you're gonna have that highlight, it's gonna not be that bright white, but more of a very subtle, just kind of back color, a little bit. Ooh, and then you can start bringing, ooh, I like the colors that you use though. The reds definitely work nicely with this. But yeah, you're just, you're just missing itty bitty pieces here. Like the inside of his ear is definitely gonna be darker. And this is, again, this is where I'm going into telling you guys, like, shapes. Think of shapes. Think of dark areas and where they're supposed to go and why this would be highlighted a little bit more. And hey, maybe a little bit of that extra lighting on top here. It's all this little stuff that you'll start learning as you keep practicing and understanding your basic roots. I cannot, like, hammer that into you guys more about, like, those basic shapes and knowing the shape of where the nose is and how... The inside is going to show up a little bit so you can start getting, like, it's going to help you with your highlights. It's going to help you with your coloring. It's going to help you with understanding everything. Because once you know how that works in a 3D space, you're going to know how to shade everything. You're going to know, like, where you're going to want to put this stuff. And granted, you'll still get a little mixed up, but that's where people come in and help critique you. Like, oh, hey, you should, you know, change this lighting up a little bit. But I mean, like... See how it's already starting to show a little bit more of a space and space? That's what I'm trying to get you guys to do, okay? This is your next step. If you want to do this kind of stuff, okay? Like, it's just the next step. You're doing an awesome job. Like I said, I love the colors that you picked. You had a general idea. Like, it was just too soft. Just a little too soft. That's all. You know? You just gotta, like, get those harsh highlights in there a little bit so you can really start telling that this is his shoulder pad and it is a piece of metal right so you're really you guys are really close on some of this it's just taking the next step all of you are working on taking that next step right now okay whoops that's not what i wanted my nose is like bothering me so anyways all right so there's that next up we got swift Ooh, swift I'm loving the background and like the the highlights and stuff like that. I don't know if you picked it off of something or if you drew it. If you drew it, really nice job. I love what you did with everything there. Uh, now your character, I'm going to tell you the same thing. And I'm going to be kind of quick about it because I just told it with everybody else. So definitely if you were just waiting to come to your spot, please go and check out what I've done for the rest of people, okay? Face shapes. You've got this really awesome like... Here. Come on. Copy image. Yeah. 
Okay, so you started with an idea. This background. But this is where, guys, if you're going to put your background, usually what I do is I put my background in first so that I can get colors for my foreground characters, right? So here's a really awesome background. I want to see, like, these purple tones all up in here and, like, shading your face and stuff like that. Because you're going to be really dark all around, like, this area up front. I'd actually probably take even some of this darker stuff. So you're going to be really dark all in this area. Your hand's going to, like, be a little bit... Maybe a little bit of highlight in there. But it's not going to be too terribly much, you know? Like, you've got this huge star area and then this, like, really harsh light that's going to come in from that, that star. So we're going to be shading the crap out of your... the foreground. The front of you. Where that light's going to be coming in. Now, I know I'm like... But this is like an idea of where stuff's going to come in. Hey, Runic, what's up? Guys, I'm really sorry that I'm not paying too much attention to chat. I'm trying to blast through people as quick as I can uh, for critique. And then I will do a cool down, say hi to everybody, and kind of hang out a little bit, okay? But I mean, this, your shapes and stuff like that, I want you to work on proportions of your face. If you're going to do more coloring like this, I want you to pick up uh, from this background and pull it into your character. And I want to see these colors start to blend together for you and start depicting more of the details and stuff here. You definitely have a good idea, though. Your basic shapes of, like, your characters, of you. Maybe it's you. I'm not sure. Uh, but of you is pretty cool looking. I kind of like it. Um, I just want to see more detail. I want to see more focus on that. Like, you've got these realistic, like, eyes, but everything else is so flat. Like, you don't have the rest of the details of your face in here. Which you'd have some highlight coming in. You just gotta get those darker colors and then bringing the face shape, excuse me, the face shape coming in a little bit more. Maybe like the reflection off your glass is just gonna just hold a little bit right there. But then your eyes, we can bring up a little bit of the color back. You know, there's there's no lips going on here. I wanna see what's going on. Like you, you're still gonna see some of this stuff. But you really want to start working and pushing that more, okay? You're really close. Like, again, if you did the background, you did a fantastic job. Like, everything in the color, the lens flare. Like, I'm giggling on that, but it's it's really cool. I definitely like what's going on back here. It's just you need to add, start adding what you've done from that background into the foreground of you. of Or whomever this is. Sorry. I'm assuming it's you. Now I'm making you look, like, super spaced out. <laughs> Sorry. But you know what I'm saying? Like, hopefully that makes a little bit of sense and you're kind of getting an idea of, like, some of the colors and stuff I'm doing here. So I'm going to actually start, like, from what I picked here, start making this a little bit darker. I'm really trying to push that shading and push these, like, this area so that you're dark. Actually, you know what? Probably do this purple on the highlight here and then all this black. Black t-shirt. going to be black, black. Yes! There we go. I like that. So hopefully, hopefully that makes sense. Kind of get an idea of what I'm talking about right here. But you see see how that already has pushed it a little bit more and I just barely like squiggled on it? Hello. Why are you doing that? Don't do that. Hey, stop that. There we go. But see how much we've already pushed it just a little bit by adding just a little bit darker of shades and stuff like that from the background. Pushing it onto your character and starting to put on those highlights. You don't have to make it perfect right away. You can keep playing with these little things and just like putting a little bit of color and putting a little bit of color and keep playing on top, doing different layers on top of each other. And if you really don't like it, then you can delete the layer and try it again. Stuff like that. Um, that's that's usually what I do for my coloring. That's mostly what I do for my coloring is I just keep like adding on and adding on. I'm like, okay, so I've got my basic colors. Now what else can I do? How can I push this more? How can I make this really pop? Okay, so again, great idea, good job. You're working on stuff. I want to see you work on either work on your proportions or if you're going to keep coloring stuff like this, uh, start pushing those shades a little bit more. Like you have, you had the idea here. It just needs to be a lot darker. Keep pushing. Add more, add more, add more. <laughs> nice job though. Nice job. You guys have all done like a really good job. I, okay, dang it. I keep opening that. And that's not what I'm trying to open. Okay. Next up, Keybot. This is super cute. 
Okay, so for a chibi style, as always, you've got the big head, little body, and then I, something that I love is making really big hands compared to, like, the rest of the body, and then the feet are super tiny. That's just a style that I have seen out of chibis that I personally really like, and I really like this. Uh, your shades are really nice. You can definitely see where Keybot's got the, uh, the highlights coming up and the highlights coming from under her chin. That way, the back of the nose and stuff like that. Although it's very not, like, super detailed because it's chibi, you still see it. You still get a little bit of an idea going on here. I think it's lost a little bit on the legs and where I think you could have pushed it just a little bit more. Um, because you've got the hair that highlights that come up really high, but then the pants don't really have too much of that. And I know that's kind of hard because she's got, like, just all dark shapes and they start to blend together pretty heavily on that. But I think you could have pushed it just a little bit more, maybe even by doing like an overlay. Um, and then the wings, I feel like, are... A, maybe you didn't finish them. I'm not going to critique the wings because I feel like you didn't finish them. Um, I like what you've got going on, though. I, I really do. I feel like it's soft. It's really nice. You've got a lot of the shapes coming up in here. The proportions are pretty nice. Um, I think the legs feel a little off, and I'm not entirely sure. I'm really bad with legs, though. I'll be very honest with you. I'm practicing them right now, trying to get a little bit better with, like, uh, torsos. Um, let's, let's see if I can figure this out. I think that would be my biggest critique right now. It's just, like, her legs. Like, I know she's stepping up. Um... To... Maybe it's right. It just feels weird because it's crossed slightly. Or maybe I want her leg to be up more. I don't know. Um, guys, as I've said a few times before, but I'll tell you again, if you're ever confused about a proportion or you're worried about, like, why doesn't this feel right or why does it feel a little weird, stand up and do the thing. Like, I know it's kind of hard if your character is, like, doing, like, some crazy-ass martial art thing. Um, but if you can look up, um, like, actual things of what you're working on or actually do the thing that you're doing um that you're drawing it'll help a lot because you'll start to understand like oh wait my body doesn't turn like that and stuff like that and then you can start to fix it a little bit so maybe it's just the angle of the foot oh maybe that is what it is yeah yeah yeah, yeah. it might also be the ground that she's stepping on let's Thing of the foot, I think, really might be it for me, too. You know what? I think, I think what I want to see, so it feels a little bit more fluid. Because she's not, she's not balanced right now because of the way her foot's angled. she feels like she's gonna fall back and the foot's there and um one thing that i usually i fuck up and i try to do this every time if you draw like a line over your character and then try to center it from there yeah now she's a little bit more centered with that but her head's still like really far back so i think what i want to see is that leg coming in a little bit and then this back leg going out a little bit more yes there we go that's what our problem was okay your legs are off just slightly because of where her... Ha 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 Okay, um, so I'd say like the angle of her foot is definitely slightly... It'd be more like right on that tiptoe because she's um, stepping up and I know she's got them high heels. So it was just, it was very minor. Very, very minor. It was still really good. I think it was just slightly bothering me because of that. But yeah, look, now she feels a little bit more settled and balanced compared to... Oh, why, why does it do that? I don't know why it does that. So now she's really pushing out and she's got that... <laughs> why do I have... <laughs> Mandark! I, uh, I like laughing like Mandark. <laughs> okay, um, Mandork. Anyway. So, see how that's got a little bit more balance, and she's definitely, she's pushing back, but she's got that chest out, and she's got the heavy, the heavy gloves, but all of her weight's now coming back onto that foot, so she's, she's circling out, and she's got that weight back on there. 
that's really about all that I see about that. The rest of it is really awesome. I want to see a little bit more rendition on the um, the wings, I think. And then just the feet, if you really want to fix that, I think it would help a little bit. If not, I still like them. I definitely do. It just pushes the, um, it pushes the weight a little bit differently. So, that's really about it. I love your highlights. I love your shapes. Um, I love the proportions that you've got for your chibis. It definitely feels weighted out because you got the big head, the big arms, and then everything else is tiny. It feels kind of like an hourglass between each shape. Um, yeah, I really, I really like what you're doing so far, Keybot. Really, really awesome. Nice work. Okay, we've got like 10 more minutes. I'm going to try to get through two more. Not from the same person. So, Speedy. Guys, I'm only just going to try to do one thing each time. So, I'm sorry if you pull several things. I'm going to work on just the one. Because it looks like you got a couple different cheapies. And I definitely like it. You've got... Psycho, I can give you tips on cell shading in just a minute. Um, You've got these really nice big heads. The cute little hourglass bodies and stuff like that. I think I just want to... The things that I don't normally like, and this is just me, I have seen it work before though, but it's hard to pull it off in a way that I really kind of like it. And so, you can take it or leave it, if you feel like this is good critique or not. I'm A, don't like when eyes show up through here, but B, like, cause look, if you take it away, it feels a lot nicer, okay? But, not to mention, where you have the eye at and where your face is kind of going, it's like, say she didn't have that there, it's really off proportion with it. Like, look at how far over that eye is. Okay? It's really, really outside of proportion of where her face is. So, huh. what's up, window? Long time no see! But yeah, like, I, you really don't even have to do that, you know? Like, covering it, it makes it already, like, it feels more in proportion. Because this eye is definitely where it needs to be. The other one was not. Even though you're doing chibi, you still want to think about proportions, guys. Okay? Uh, because it's going to help really push that super chibi effect. Because chibi is just, like, a squashed version of the human being. So, or, like, a very simplistic version of the human form. Usually. Or whatever form, like, if you're doing an animal or something like that, right? So, you can definitely keep these rounded shapes and stuff like that. Yes, no duro. It will be uploaded. I will be posting all of my stuff to YouTube as soon as I've got it done here, okay? So, we're going to try to rush this up. But yes, your shapes, clean them up a little bit. Um, You've got now all this shape here for Ari, but you don't know, for this little dude. Like, don't, don't, don't scuff on that, you know? Like, you've got the nice shapes of her clothing and everything. Why not give this little dude a little bit of shape in his clothing and stuff as well? Like, you don't have to, like, you can still make it simplistic. Give him a little bit, you know? Like, okay. He's got a little bit of pant flare going on here, and then, like, a little shoe. Do a little shoe. You know, add, add something just a little bit more. This is really bad, but you know what I'm saying. Like, give him, give him a little bit of the pants where the, the shapes are going to go. Just a little, whoops, grabbing stuff here. Give him some, there we go, some basic shape. And then we're going to just do a dark shoe here. Yeah, see? And that already gave him just a little bit more characteristic. Just a little bit. So, um, I think what I want you to work on for your chibis is... A, thinking about basic proportions, like, his eye could definitely be a little bit closer. Because, like, just erasing it, I can already see, like, just a little bit closer. You still want to think about this area and keeping things even, right? Area, even, here's where the eye would be. And you're not going to see it, okay? Um, try not to draw stuff through the hair unless you've got a really good idea of where you're going to put, like, proportionally put it. Keep things in proportion, too. Keep working on that, okay? You're really close on some of that. So you definitely want to uh, think about these things. Think about every single shape that you're going to do into your chibis. If you're going to do super simplistic, you know, give it just a little bit. Not just like, okay, maybe he's going to have this tear-shaped body. And then something like that. Like, draw just really basic shapes for everything. And soon you'll start to see, like, oh, yeah, I really like this. Or, oh, no, I really don't like that.
So that's that's kind of what I see here is I like this kind of tier like draw a tier shape and then like for one body try drawing like a rectangle or one body try drawing a figure like a little t potato thing like draw shapes and then try to draw around those shapes and see what would look good with those shapes because you can actually make something kind of cool looking every single time that's how actually uh basic characters for like when you do the silhouettes and stuff remember playing who's that Pokemon you know what Pokemon it is because of the shape of the characters. Am I right? Usually they have something that is very distinguishable between each character, even though you don't have to see every single detail of that character. You know that silhouette because that character is very understandable based off of their shape. That's what I'm trying to tell you guys, okay? All right, and last critique I'm gonna be able to get to today is going to be, oh, Speedy. Speedy again? Okay, Speedy, I'm sorry. I, I will come back to you again, but I'm trying to only do one at a time for you. So you've got the chibi stuff here. I'm guessing you looked off. Of, I'll just be really quick. I looked. I want to know more detail about this because it's very different um, from your main stuff to this. So I'm guessing you looked off of something. I really like the flat colors and the liner. You did a really cool thing and like the backgrounds and stuff like that. But I want to know a little bit more like um, the coloring and stuff like that. We can go into more details later there. So we'll we'll work on that. Yeah, this is different too. So I'm I, I want to know a little bit more from you. So we're gonna go. Okay, last one is gonna be from Tofu. Alright, Tofu here. Now I know Tofu, I'm pretty sure you're still Tofu is learning by looking off of other things right now and drawing from it. Um he has told me that. Guys, if you're ever gonna do that, please let me know that you're drawing off of something so I know to critique it based off of that. Or if it's something that you drew by yourself. Um, and as always, if you're going to draw off of something, give the person critique. Or, uh, uh, pff, not critique. <laughs> give that person that you draw off of, um, credit. That's what the word I'm looking for. Give them credit, okay? Let me know, because it's okay, but you have to give them credit. You have to let me know so that I know where to critique you guys from there. Because if I'm thinking that you know how to draw this stuff, you don't. You're trying to draw off of something. You gotta, you gotta give people credit, okay? It's okay to learn that way, but you do not post it to the internet unless that artist knows they're okay with it and you credit them, period, okay? It is okay to learn that way, but you must give people credit, always. All right, so moving back to Tofu. Tofu, you are getting so much better on your lines, dude. That's not what I was trying to get, go away. Just critiqued you. <laughs> Not copy image, copy image. There we go. Your line art is getting so much better. I really love how clean everything looks. Um, you're starting to do this again here though. Like everything in the face right here and the hair, I really like, except for maybe a little bit too much on the detail of some of the hair pieces. It looks cool though. But same with like, then it's down here. You've got too much, I think going on of, I really like when you do this anime style, anime's got a really nice clean, subtle look and it doesn't need all these lines to really tell what's going on because usually what you do is um once you have the base lines down what you'll do is you'll do cell shading to kind of do the rest so all these lines i really don't think you needed all of that because you've already got kind of the flow of her jacket going on here you can add a few but just some of it kind of really gets lost here same with her legs like the face the body, everything looks really cool here, but her legs are all over wonky de doo So uh, you want to think about that if you're drawing that in yourself. Still making sure that you keep to the proportions. Um, so like, don't just draw. Don't ever draw clothes first, guys. Unfortunately, you definitely have to think about your character and the shapes of them. And you have to draw them without the clothes before you add the clothes in. Otherwise, you're going to mess everything up. So, I'm not quite sure what's going on here, but I'm going to guess. That's the first thing that I really see, is just excess lines that you probably don't really need. And then, making sure your body proportions are good before you start adding on all these clothing details and stuff like that. So, now that I know her basic shapes, I know that the cloth is probably going to flow around like this. Which you were close on. You just tried, it looks like you tried drawing that without the, um.
without having taken the time to figure out where the rest of the body was. So you're close. You're close, just not quite. I'm a little off still on the body as well, like I made her legs really thick, but you get the idea, hopefully. Um, I don't know what all these details are supposed to be right here, but I kind of don't like them. It's just these weird scratch lines that I think if it's going to be something that you can do in the coloring that would look nice without line art at all, try that. So, um, I, I that's what I want to see for you here. Start doing all these details, like I love what you're doing with it, but think about where your body proportions are going to be. Keep with your line art, but start taking out some of this excess stuff. Like, you probably didn't need all these. I like some of them in the hair here. That looks okay. But I feel like you could have probably, like, gotten rid of some of that and still been totally okay. And, like, even erasing some of this where the lines kind of come in and out together. Like, it looks cool, I think, when you've got this top line that goes through. But then that one goes under. But then you've got this one that goes under. Like, start crisscrossing some of these. And then have some of it actually blend together a little bit like this blends into this so you've got this nice chunk of hair right here because that's what you did up here but then you started to lose it and then you started to just like kind of cram stuff everywhere and i'm not sure where her shoulder went i think it's part of this thing i'm not sure what's coming out of the vents of this arm piece thingy here like it looks cool but i'm just not quite sure what's going on with it so uh same with all this back here like I think with color, I probably understand a little bit more. So just just stuff like that. I think you're really close, Tofu. I You're really, really getting close to these details. So that's what I want to see you do. I want to make sure that you understand your body proportions, then draw the clothing over the top. Think about how clothing like sits on people, right? Uh, Take out some of the excess details because you don't need it because your lines of like because she's got that zipper that's gonna tell already what's going on with like a portion of her clothes without you having to do very much like see and then i i don't even have to have like some of these lines in here because the clothes already tell you the, the answer anyway so um work on body proportions make sure clothes fit right and take out some of the excess detail and I think you'll be really good. So nice job, Tofu. Keep it up, man. You're, you're definitely improving. I love seeing your improvement on your line art. Like, every time you've posted something to me, I keep seeing more and more improvement on your line art. It looks really crisp now. I really like it. Much less shaky. Very nice, clean brush strokes every single time. You're doing fantastic. All right, guys. Unfortunately, that's all I've got time for for now. I will try to do another one maybe tomorrow. Um, do a quick critique power hour. And we'll get right back into, next time we'll start off with Nerolyn, which by the way, this looks awesome. Really nice job, Nerolyn. And everybody else, I will definitely try to get in as soon as I possibly can. I will do my absolute best, okay? I love you all. Thank you very much. I'll be posting this up on YouTube. People on YouTube, if you want to see this, I'm going to try to get back onto this for a critique power hour every hour. And I'm going to very soon have a um, announcements area, which is going to tell you guys, what I'm going to start doing for these critiques and pretty much any other announcement that I can think of, okay? So come say hi on Discord for those of you who don't know how to get to it. It's really easy. It's tinyurl.com slash rin, R-I-N-D-I-S-C, disc. Easy enough? Okay. If not, check out the Twitter, uh, the Twitch. I've got links everywhere to get to this, um, to my Discord channel, okay? Come say hi, come chat with other people, help critique each other as well, okay? People have been helping critique one another in this chat the entire time. Please come and do that. Come say hi, let people know what's going on, and give them some information and feedback. I don't have to be the only one, and I don't know everything, guys. You can come and help one, each other, one another out. Even if you're not a professional artist, you guys can start seeing stuff as well. You guys can start paying attention to what's going on based off of what you know from real life as well. So do it. Come help me, please. I would love that. I'm sure everybody would love to hear feedback from one another. Help each other out. That's what I'm building this community for, okay? So, guys, I love you. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next uh, critique.